Okay, this is a demonstration of the pick and place machine. I'm going to show the process from solder paste uh, application to the picking and placing and uh, to uh, reflowing the solder. So I'm taking, this is just a standard um, uh, clipboard. I'm using it uh, to, uh, for my, my solder paste application. And I'm just using some used uh, or some perf board that I have that's really cheap. I add the, the PCB into this location. I align the, uh, my stencil, this is a stainless steel stencil, um, and I'm just using some standard tape to align it and to keep it in place while I spread the solder paste. I'm going to take the solder paste, this is solder paste, uh, just a holder that I use. It's, I'm able to clean up pretty easily using this. And I knead the, the, the solder paste a little bit before I apply it. I just get a little roll onto the, the applicator. This is just a standard putty knife. Probably didn't get enough on my knife. Let's see, it's actually pretty good. Okay. Looks like I could use a little bit on this location here. This is pretty messy stuff. Try to I'm gonna try to be as neat as possible because this is not the healthiest substance on earth. I'm just gonna clean up the edges here. Try to save some some solder paste. Should be ready. I noticed that it flipped up a little bit. I'm hoping that the solder paste didn't get smeared underneath. Looks like it's pretty good actually. So I got some solder paste on there and in the right places. So now I'm gonna put it to the machine. Place it onto the machine. I'm placing it in this location because I, I designed this PCB to be pretty thin and I have some components on the edge and I don't want it to hit the edge, so I use another PCB to help me out. So I'm just going to use these little plugs. PCB board is pretty much set in there. First, I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview on the actual tools that I'm using. And I have, I'm using EMC2 uh, under Linux. And I'm using this because I like the user interface to it. You can see that there are, these are all the pick and place locations. It's, these are the reels and this is the, the place locations. These are also reels that, in the back it's using. Um, and I've developed two main files. This is um, a pick and place uh, program. It's actually G code. All of this is G code. It's using if then statements. Um, it's using subroutines and calls. Uh, it's pretty complex G-code, but it's, it's, it's created so the actual picking and placing G-code is pretty simple. And really all you have is X, Y uh, locations. You have uh, orientation on the pick and orientation on the place locations. You have the reel and the banks, banks and reels. Um, uh, set in a, in a definition file, and this is the definition file here. And um, it's set pretty much the G code is made so this is a really simple task, and these relate to the camera locations, not the actual nozzle locations. And all of that um, offsets, the camera offsets, and things like that are done um, internally in the G code. So I'm going to go ahead and run this file in EMC. Uh, there's also a way you can um, check the, the placement of the components, but I'm not doing that right now because um, I want this um, process to go pretty quickly. So I don't really need the camera. And I'm going to go ahead and get started. So I'm just going to press play and we'll watch the components get set to the board. Now what it's doing right now, it's telling me to insert tool 1. Tool 1 is essentially just the nozzle, so I'm not going to insert any tool. Uh, and the tools that I use are um, cups. So it'll, it'll, it'll ask me to, to change a cup or to add a cup. And then what it'll do, it'll press the cup in, onto the nozzle of the correct location.
and like sometimes it gets out of focus. Okay, now it's asking me to insert num tool number two. So I'm going to insert this tool. It stopped automatically, so I can do this. I wrote a tiny G code to bring this, bring the nozzle down, and set the set this cup in the right location, vertically. Watch out. Comes out too fast. No. Okay, now it's asking me for tool number three. I'm gonna put the next larger one on. and we're going to reflow the solder on a skillet. The skillet technique I got from SparkFun. They have a really great tutorial on how to reflow solder. First I want to inspect it to make sure everything is lined up correctly. And after inspecting it I may make some changes to, to the G-code for picking and placing just to make sure that everything is on their pads. Looks like everything is good. Let's see one component that I need to update a little bit. This is a capacitor. I'll just move it on the pad. Move this a little bit. So I need to make a couple adjustments for this one, but not a big deal. I want to, what I really want to make sure is the large ICs are pretty well placed because they're not going to move as easily during the reflow process. So just aligning all the legs to make sure all the legs are good. Okay, that looks good. Now let's go ahead and reflow. What I'm doing right here is uh, putting the the PCB onto a skillet. And the skillet has a, uh, because there's a heating element that is a sort of a, in a circle underneath. So um, what I'm using is a uh, piece of aluminum foil that better distributes the, the heat um, underneath the PCB. So I'm going to go ahead and place that there. I'm going to use a respirator so I can protect myself from the, generally the flux that's going to be going into the air. Turning up to 450, and I just wait for it to re reflow. Wait for it to reflow, and and once it starts reflowing, you want to leave it uh, to allow the components to position themselves, and then you can turn the heat off and wait until it cools down.
Okay, here it goes. Let's see if that LED will slide in. Yep, it slid in nicely. Okay, so that worked. The LED was on the pads, it just wasn't perfectly on the pads, but it it made it quite well. Now we're waiting for the some of the components that have more metal around it to start to start going. And the large IC as well. You can see the large resistor on this side is not not quite reflowing yet. There it goes. Now it's sliding in place there. Yep, that worked. So once that's done, you can go ahead and turn it off because everything is pretty much done. As you can, you'll probably have a good indicator of the worst or the the one component that takes the longest, and then you can use that as an indicator to turn it off. Now, once everything is soldered nicely, you want to wait until it um, gets pretty. Uh, uh, you want to wait until it cools down before you move it, uh, because everything is really still wet. Uh, and the only thing now to do is to uh, hand solder the through hole components. You want what you want to do with if you have a scene, if you have a pick and place machine, you want to try to design in as many pick and, uh, as many SMD components as possible, so you don't have to do much hand soldering. I have headers here that I need to solder. Um, there's actually two capacitors that I could have selected as SMD, but I didn't, um, but I probably will next time. And then I have uh, some larger headers here and a switch here. And I can probably find the switch as an SMD as well, so I can, I can look into that. I'm not really sure how I'm going to do a pick and place on a switch yet because it has too many um, sur uh, undulating um, parts to the surface. So that'll be uh, that'll be a challenge, but uh, pretty much it's done. The SMD process and the pick and placing is done, and that is an introduction and example of a complete um, process for pick and place.